Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Wednesday, January 2nd, 2018. Thank you for tuning in today. Let's take a look at our solar conditions right now. Our solar wind speed is sitting at a 330.5 kilometers per second with a density of 1.2. Taking a look at the sun and guess what? We've got a sunspot for 2019 AR2732. Is a member of a decaying solar cycle 24 and poses no threat for strong solar flares. Sunspot number 13, and so far in 2019, we have zero days without a sunspot. Now, TCI readings coming in at 36.7 billion watts. My speculation is that uh, we have watched the temperature drop from 45 billion watts all the way down to 31 billion watts. And now um, the temperature is going up just a little bit. And that would have something to do with the sudden stratospheric warming event that's happening in the Arctic. And we'll get more into that here in just a bit. <clears throat> Taking a look at our KP indices, sitting at a 1 with a 24-hour max of 1 as well. And taking a look at our SDO, we do have a coronal hole that will be hitting our magnetic field by the 4th or the 5th, according to NOAA. And let's take a look at the SDO in motion here. There's that coronal hole. Right above that coronal hole is a sunspot 2732 that did shoot off. I believe it was that one that shot off a minor uh, solar flare or the one just north to it. However, uh, nothing major from it and is not expected to uh, disrupt anything else at this point. Now, taking a look at the sun on the eastern limb, do we have any more activity north of the equatorial region? Well, take a look here at the tail end of this. It is possible there at the very end we are possibly tracking what could be our next sunspot, and it's 2019. I know we've talked about this solar cycle being over somewhere around late 2019, but it has to make you wonder if that is another sunspot in that particular region. We have a multiple uh, multitude of active regions between the negative 90 and 180 region and just outside of the 180, so some activity in that northern part of the equatorial region of the sun in the backside as well. So we will keep our eyes on the next few active regions that we see so far. Everything is north of where it should be. So um, we will keep monitoring that as we do approach solar cycle 25. Uh, but right now, uh, nothing too crazy, but still, it is early 2019. TSI has stuck around at the 1360.69 range on December 24th, 2018. Remember, the TSI data comes in about seven to eight days later. So we never will have real-time TSI. This will always be about eight days behind. And new eruptions at Krakatau eject ash up to 50,000 feet. New strong eruptions were reported at Krakatau early January 2nd, 2019, after several days of relative calm. According to the Darwin D VAAC, ash plumes were observed rising up to 40,000 feet and then again at 50,000 feet above sea level. Volcanic ash up to 38,000 ASL is, is discernible on the latest satellite imagery extending to the east the Darwin VAAC reported at 0041 UTC, January 2nd. According to the Krakatoa Volcano Observatory, notice for aviation issued uh, with the eruption lasting 71 seconds that took place at 0230 UTC time, 938 local time. The best estimate of the ash cloud top is around 5,152 feet. ASL may be higher than what can be observed clearly from the ground, the observatory had said. The eruption was recorded on a seismogram as continuous tremor with maximum amplitude of 11 millimeters. Volcanic ash up to 38,000 feet is no longer discernible on satellite imagery. However, a new eruption is currently underway 
and this was 337 UTC with volcano ash reaching 50,000 feet so um, we have seen the Shivaloch uh, volcano in Russia where it went off scientists warned that we were going to see a 29,000 to 45,000 feet ash plume eruption and we have and now this has been kind of a sudden um, I hadn't heard anything about another 50,000 ash plume coming from Krakatau but once again uh, we do see another eruption this is the latest imagery that we have here so far thanks to watchers.news It's showing here satellite imagery analyzed apparently clear loss of land in the southern flank. Uh, this led to the tsunamis affecting Banten and Lampung, Indonesia. This was from the 22nd, so this is just showing you how that region, yes, you can definitely see that loss of land as it collapsed into the ocean causing the tsunami. Um, Good time to pay attention and not so much about colder temps. This is the other side of the grand solar minimum part of things that uh, we don't usually talk about a lot, which we should. But here lately, we've been kind of, we have to. Uh, it's like we've got two big volcanic eruptions uh, every week right now. Anything from 30,000 feet and higher. Uh, so very, very active 2019 We'll leave a link in the description. Arctic outbreak descends on Southeast Europe. Lots of snow in Strombura expected, winds expected. While Scandinavia is already witnessing a significant drop in temperatures as well as all-time record winds in parts of Western Finland, the Balkan Peninsula will still have at least a day before frigid Arctic air settles over the region. Forecasts recall for lots of snow, especially over Bosnia and the continental Croatia, Serbia, Montenegro, and all the way down to Greece. On Thursday, January 3rd, very cold air masses affects across the Balkan Peninsula into the Adriatic region and South Central Italy. A day later, the cold affection intensifies and affects most of the same region again, with even colder temperatures raising 10 to 12 degrees Celsius below average on Saturday, January 5th. The coldest air mass spreads further south into the southern Balkan Peninsula and as far as the southern Mediterranean, reaching Libya and Tunisia as well. This will bring snow to lower elevations in the region, especially Greece. Take a look at this tropical tidbits map, temperature anomaly. You see very cold air in Europe, Italy, Greece. Once the very cold air mass affects into the Balkan Peninsula, a sharp pressure and temperature gradient develops across the Adriatic Sea, resulting in severe to extremely severe bora winds. Meanwhile, the persistent staff of snowfall effect is expected across the Northern Alps with snow both at low and high elevations. Snowfall there is expected to do, go through at least until the end of the week. Two or, three weeks late, two or three weeks later, this outbreak is expected to be followed by freezing effects from this major sudden, uh, stratospheric sudden warming event which is currently underway above in the Arctic region. All things are considered, it seems that very significant winter weather is about to hit Europe and stay there for quite some time. Check up on your neighbors from time to time, especially the elders and all those without a home. Um, so all those people out there who are uh, asking where winter is, unfortunately it's right here on our doorstep, the real uh, the part we were talking about that we were going to see this year a little bit more of and what I think they mean as far as this cold being here for quite some time uh, we're, we're looking at possibly end of February uh, definitely from mid-January to mid-February possibly as late as February where this cold Arctic blast will invade this area um, we've been talking about this for a few days now and we talked about it a week ago where it's time to heed the warnings prepare uh, we're gonna say it again a week before the real stuff really finally hits the areas here in Europe and in the Northeast United States but uh, I'll get to that as well it's not just the Northeast right now in 2019 we're on a very uh, active uh, 
pace right now. Let's just put it seismic weather, volcanic we uh, activity, uh, regular weather, severe weather, winter weather. Australia's getting warm. I mean, it's it's all over the place right now. Major sudden stratospheric warming underway. Significant winter weather likely across large parts of Europe. A major strat sudden stratospheric warming event is currently underway with uh, the stratospheric above the Arctic. While not every SSW event is the same, it takes some time for it to show its effects in the troposphere. Meteor to say we can expect cold air to move into Europe in the next 15 to 20 days. This seems to be the top story of the weather uh, world right now says the current SSW process has begun around a week ago and is now slowly progressing from stratosphere down into the troposphere, the lowest layer of Earth's atmosphere. An SSW event usually has the strongest impact over the North Pole. Higher pressure can be expected to build over and around the Arctic region, which enables colder Arctic air masses to, adverse, to, advert, to advect far south into the mid-latitudes. Currently, GEFS is simulating a more classic south, I'm sorry, sudden stratospheric warming response by creating this higher pressure over the Arctic region and bringing colder air mass into Europe and into parts of North America. Now, this has been pretty consistent with um, some of Judah Cohen's predictions. There are three vortices that we're watching, one over uh, Asia one over Europe, and one over the northeast, eastern part of the United States. This is likely to bring severe weather to parts of the northeast and northwest and northern plains for the United States. This will not affect everyone. I think it's important to point that out. Right now, this is more of a regional effect. Not everybody's getting this cold. I've got family in Southwest Ohio, and you know, I got a call from my brother, and he's telling me it's 50 degrees. What happened to all that cold air? Yeah, you know, I never once claimed that everybody at the same time is going to experience a cold, cold winter. Um, I think we've made it clear that this is regional, and things like this can be a game changer into what kind of a winter we're going to have. Now, with the possibility of an El Nino, the Northeast already was expecting snowy and cold this winter anyway. That was the forecast. Now you factor in the polar vortex disruption, and we have to wonder now, are we going to look at colder and snowier temps? Again, this is only the very beginning of the event, so... It's, it's hard to say how far out right now we are as far as accuracy goes. I'll leave a link in the description. And Leo Tulo, volcano alert raised to a number two in Indonesia. It was a one, now it is a two. And the decision to raise the alert level was made due to increased seismic activity over the past seven days. People living around the volcano area should avoid the 1.2 miles exclusion zone around the crater. There's a map showing you exactly the danger zones here. That secondary ring is where um, actually they are advising everyone to stay away from at this point. I didn't mean to put this one actually in front of the weather because I had uh, something to tie into the colder weather that we're experiencing in the uh, European areas. Also with the atmospheric warming event that's happening I'm sorry stratospheric warming event that we're having the sudden one uh, but this was supposed to be tied in with you know Krakatau and its eruption and just the uptick that we've seen with volcanic activity so I do apologize for going off uh, topic here folks but so we go from the Arctic and before we get into the really cold stuff I wanted to talk real quick about Houston and all the rain that we've seen down there. And guys, this looks like a repeat, almost a weekly basis down here for the Texas region, Houston, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, Alabama, parts of northern Georgia right now experiencing showers. This continues to move east, northeast. Uh, just had a friend of ours in the chat before the show started reporting that there is a very dense fog in the Mississippi Gulf Coast region right now as we speak. 
Uh, temperatures are sort of mild, so that makes sense with the colder air just to the north of this. And you guys can see where the northern edge of this storm, where the temperatures are dropping right now, uh, you are seeing light snow showers to moderate snow showers in parts of northern Arkansas. And right now we're seeing light snow showers across southern Kentucky as well right now. So we'll keep our eyes on this system as it continues to approach the northeast Atlantic region. And up here in upstate, this is the next system that's moving in. Uh, believe it or not, this system is expected to arrive here at some point in upstate New York as well. So we've got snow in the north and rain across the south. And let's get right into the headlines. So here we go. Houston residents are in for a wet, potentially dangerous couple of days as continuous heavy rainfall threatens to flood the area in the first days of 2019. Yes, already. A flash flood watch is in effect from Wednesday morning to Thursday, while heavy rainfall is expected to bring up to three inches of rain to the city. According to the National Weather Service, expect higher amounts in some low-lying areas, possibly five to six more inches. Houston area residents could be cautious of creeks, rivers, bayous over the next few days, and they should also stay on top of high uh, water risks on highways using the Houston Transtar map. The forecast shows the rain dying down by Thursday night with temperatures cooling to a 39 degree low. A crisp clear weekend lies ahead with sunny Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so they will dry off just a little bit. Moving further east, sandbags available in East Baton Rouge ahead of a potential flooding Thursday. So we're getting ready for this already. The Governor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness is urging residents to monitor potentially heavy rainfall between Wednesday and Friday that may cause flooding in some areas. Mm -hmm. Officials say a flash flood watch is in effect 6 a.m. Friday for a portion of northeast Texas and portions of central Louisiana. The watch is along and south of the state line from Lufkin, uh, Naco Doches, and Center, Texas to Mansville, uh, Bineville, Rushton, and Farmerville, Louisiana. Flash flood will be possible across low-lying and flood-prone areas. Some rivers, lakes, and bayous are still at high levels from previous heavy rainfall. The incoming weather will result in additional rises and crests on those bodies of water, according to the GOHSEP. Sandbags are being made at the following locations throughout East Baton Rouge Parish. And here is a list of areas of um, places where you can get uh, sandbags and or help uh, manufacture sandbags as well. Drivers are advised to use caution when traveling. Never drive through a flooded area, it urges. Snowfall hits southern Arizona, causing traffic delays. Here's where we get started into our winter. This is January 2nd. Snowfall hit the Tucson area and other parts of southern Arizona Wednesday morning. National Weather Service issued warnings and advisories for winter weather and freezing temperatures. Snowfall in Tucson is expected to stop in the morning, but will continue in other areas throughout the day. Cochise County tweeted, Blowing snow was, impact it was impacting visibility in the area. The weather caused the county to close offices early. The county was under winter uh, weather warning storm, storm warning until 5 p.m. Inches of snow had fallen in various areas. Uh, reports of six inches at the airport. Uh, traces at the Tucson airport and six inches in Nogales. I think that's what they, how they pronounce it, Nogales. Anyway, take a look at a map here. Southeast Arizona, guys, the further south we go, the bigger snow totals we have. Uh, six inches right there at the border. Five inches of snow, five and a half in Klondike. Five inches in Dubac. Four inches in Canelo. Three inches in Sierra Vista. Sierra Vista, sorry. So kind of a surprise here to see the Southwest. Uh, I know I have friends that go into the Southwest during this time of year to get away from the cold air and the winter weather here. So... <laughs> A lot of them were posting pictures of their friends where here's one right here. It says up to six inches of snow expected throughout the county here in Cochise County. They're telling everyone to slow down. And of course, this area, not pro to this kind of weather all the time, but it is winter. And then we go right down the line as we move from Arizona. 
to Colorado. Dry southwestern Colorado starts the new year with snow, including 34 inches at Wolf Creek. Southwestern Colorado is starting the new year with lots of snow after one of its worst drought years. The Durango Herald reports that the storm began Monday and ended Tuesday, dropped more than 10 inches of snow in Durango, two feet at Chimney Rock National Monument, and 34 inches at Wolf Creek Ski Area. The Four Corners region where Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah meet has been listed in the most extreme drought category since early last year. Going a little bit further east now, Chicago. With low-level moisture in place and upper-level disturbances passing overhead, will keep cloudiness and occasional light snow over the Chicago area Wednesday. Any accumulations will mainly be north of Interstate 80 and generally less than half an inch. As the upper disturbance moves off to the east, skies will gradually clear from the west overnight. Talking about tonight. Or this was last night, I'm sorry. Again, more cold air, more snow chances moving through the Midwest. Continuing on eastward, here we are, Wisconsin, January 2nd. From the Milwaukee Journal, roads in southern Wisconsin could get slippery into the afternoon. National Weather Service is forecasting potential for brief periods of light freezing rain or drizzle from Monroe, Janesville areas east to Elkhorn, and Delavan, Burlington, Racine, and Kenosha. Light snow began moving into the metro Milwaukee area mid-morning, but it's pushing east quickly with periods of snow showers possible through 4 p.m. Accumulations are minor, less than an inch to a half inch have been, has been reported so far. High temperatures are expected to be in the upper 20s today with a low around 19 tonight. Moving further east, Metro Detroit, light snow, chance for freezing rain this afternoon, evening as well. Uh, in fact, the entire state of Michigan is going to experience some sort of light uh, accumulation from snow showers that are coming through right now. Thursday morning may stop cloudy, but we will battle back with some afternoon sunshine. Morning lows in the mid-20s, afternoon highs in the upper 30s, so not really too cold, but just dealing with more winter-like weather with snow showers off and on through the weekend from tonight through the weekend. Moving right along to upstate New York, Glens Falls to be exact. Snow, that frozen white substance we haven't seen much of since November, will likely make a reappearance in the Glen Falls area early Thursday. An inch or two of accumulation is likely overnight Wednesday, enough to cause problems on area roads for Thursday's commute. Warmer weather is likely to be in place on Thursday and Friday with highs in the upper 30s, low 40s, before another storm brings some mixed precipitation on Saturday. And then uh, there's another storm to talk about as well on Monday of next week, and I'll get into that as well. Racing through these headlines here, uh, talking more about the northeast with more cold air moving into the region. Again, why am I racing through all of these headlines about snow and cold? I just basically went over through the entire um, United States from southwest to the east. All right, where we're we've dealt with last uh, last week, we had tons of um, we had tons of blizzard warnings in the Dakotas. We had snow in the northern plains, in the Rockies, Idaho, the Northwest had their share, and then we start 2019 off from Arizona. Right here, we start off with snow. It's moved since, but now we're getting flood, flood warnings in the south. Snow on the northern edge of this is that cold air is coming down from the Arctic. So winter is starting to pick up its uh, act a little bit here. And this is just the very beginning. Now, this is not even nothing really to report, but I'm just trying to show you that already 2019 in January, we're seeing the snow starting to uptick just a little bit more here. Two things I wanted to go over before I get off the air. First is our our global temperatures here for the UAH. Now for December, the numbers are in, and we are down just a little bit from 0.28 above baseline to 0.25 above baseline. So we dropped 0.03 in our global uh, temperatures for the month of December. Now, for the entire year, I believe 2018 was at a plus 2.3 above baseline. So, you know, no matter how you want to look at it, this has been on the decline. And since we started doing this channel, which was right here, we've talked about this continuing to drop. 
It's not going to stop. Um, and we are in year one of this minimum, basically, that's getting ready to start, that's kicking into full gear right now. Yes, we have some minor sunspots to speak of at this point, but these are typical solar minimum sunspots. When you're talking about 13 or 14 sunspots or less, it's not that big of a deal. You're, you might get a B-class solar flare. Now, do I think that we will see a slightly warmer January for next month? Probably. We've got the the sudden stratospheric warming event right now in the Arctic. So I'm sure it's going to contribute to the Arctic's temperatures because the, the Arctic is showing a downward trend right now. The last three months, they really shot up to point uh, one, one, one. Where do I find it here? Hang on, let me get all the way down so I can, here we go. So here we were just a couple of months ago in October. And that was the reason why we saw the increase in the, um, in the UHA. In the UAH, I should say. And then November improved. It dropped in the Arctic like it should. And then dropped once again this month in December. Also to report with that is a slightly healthier ice extent. For 2019, we start off at point, I'm sorry, 12.57 millions of square kilometers of Arctic sea ice extent. So that is officially point 0.23, yes, point 0.23 millions of square kilometers more. And it's a small gain, guys, but it is a gain. And it's something to mark. And like I said, I'm glad that I had a individual comment about how I don't show the lack of sea ice and how uh, trends have shown it. The graphs have been pretty weak, but um, I, I'm glad that I started paying attention to that too because I've been showing the ups and downs of that but we definitely gained for the beginning of 2019 so now we watch it another year and find out how much more this sea ice extent will continue to go up but back to Dr. Roy Spencer here uh, Northern Hemisphere let's go take a look uh, rose just a little bit a couple other areas that went down the Southern Hemisphere the lower 48 uh, actually rose quite a bit almost a full degree and I can believe that like I said we've seen a warmer uh, month of December no snow but I think the trend remained the whole time was uh, you know a dry December or you know lack of snow in December means a snowy January and already just in the first two days of January we've seen quite a bit of snow nothing major to shut down cities or anything but um, Still, the uptick of snow is absolutely beginning, not just here in the United States, but also across the world in uh, Europe and Asia as well. But he talks about the 2018 globally average temperature anomaly adjusted for the month, the number of the days in each month is at 0.23 degrees Celsius, making 2018 the sixth warmest year and now a 40 year satellite record. But listen, don't let that fool you. All right. You hear sixth warmest and you think, wow, we're, we're, uh, we had a warm year. But don't let that fool you. Look where the number one year is right here. And look what's happened since. Since 2016, there's 17. It's lower than 16. And now we're at 18. And 18 is lower than 17 and 16 by a lot. So let's continue to watch this. You know, you could say sixth warmest summer or sixth warmest year on globe. And then what happens in 2019? Here? Somewhere in here? We'll see. Right now we're at 0 0.23. Um, another thing that a lot of these uh, forecasts you can't factor in is how many more volcanoes are we going to have continuing to erupt? How much more stratovolcanoes are we going to see erupt and blocking out sunlight in different parts of the world before that starts affecting climate? Um, like I said, for the first time since I've covered this, topic in 2016 uh, here recently I've, I've uh, been a little bit more concerned about the volcanoes the uptick and the explosions and the ash clouds and how high they're getting and you know more than just a couple at a time in the same week so it's definitely something we'll have to keep our eyes on as always part of the foundation of what we know about grand solar minimums and other solar minimums as well 
We haven't had an asshole of the week in a while. But I meant I mentioned something on Twitter. And I saw that what's up with that put a little piece here. Uh, Mr. Brown claims that climate change is as dangerous as a World War II battle right now. Let that sink in for a minute. So, what you're telling us, your people and people all over the world, is that climate change is going to commit genocide and kill millions of people, innocent people, for no reason. That's a very, very fear pornish statement of you, Mr. Governor. Let's, uh, Bloomberg slams Trump on climate change, which Brown likens to Nazism. Michael Bloomberg slammed Donald Trump's inaction, inaction on climate change on Sunday and said any candidate for president in 2020, he himself might be one, God no, must have a plan to deal with the problem. At the same time, retiring California Governor Jerry Brown likened the fight against climate change to fight against Nazism during the Second World War. He says we have an enemy, perhaps very much devastating in a similar way. Both men appeared on NBC's Meet the Press. The billionaire former New York mayor said it would be a lot more helpful if we had a climate champion rather than a climate denier in the White House. <laughs> Again, let's specify here that this is not a climate change denying event. This is a man-made climate change denier. Not climate change denier. We all acknowledge climate change. We're going through it right now. We're explaining at this channel why it's happening. It's science. It ain't man. You know, I've always thought Trump had the right had a right to his opinions, but he doesn't have a right to his own facts. <laughs> More liberal bullshit. Okay, I'll, it's a family show. I'll keep the bad words out. A vocal critic of the coal industry, Bloomberg, whose fortune is estimated at forty billion, and who spent a hundred million on his last mayoral race, says he has plans to make climate change a leading issue. In the 2020 race. Oh boy. Oh boy. Mari and I will be very busy with that. Trying to unwind the propaganda from the Democrats in that campaign. I can't wait. Any candidate for federal office better darn well have a plan to deal with a problem that Trump science advisors say could basically end this world. He says, I can tell you one thing. I don't know whether I'm going to run or not, but I will be out there demanding that anybody that's running has a plan. What kind, of, what kind of impersonation is that, G? That is just my typical rabble rabble from the left. Uh, Concerned Canadian wants to know if you could do that in Earl uh, James Earl Jones instead. So. Earl James. No, I don't know how to do it, Earl okay, James. Okay, well, you'll work on it. I'll, I'll work on it for him, but it would be, or Morgan Freeman maybe. Any candidate for federal office better darn well have a plan to deal with the problem that Trump science advisors could say, basically, in this world. I don't know much, but Andy was a smart man. A brilliant man. Anyway, these guys sound ridiculous. Um, you know, I, like I said, I tweeted out the story. If you guys don't follow me, it's Jake at JakeGSM. But I tweeted out the story where Mike Brown was saying, where, you know, climate change is like fighting Nazism. And somebody replied and said, well, it kind of is. You know, we're, currently we're not um, in any world war. So this is the second worst thing to deal with is climate change, natural design. You know, I get that. But this is just straight up fear port. And also misleading to think that man has anything to do with causing or uh, stopping climate change because that's the biggest that's the biggest misconception about this whole community is that one side believes that man can manipulate and change and the other side believes that this is not man's doing that this is all natural this is all cycles this is already you know in the cosmos and a lot of the science that we present uh you know that's why we think that it's, it's true we can prove what happens to our climate with scientific evidence and not fear pornish uh, data or confusing information 
and blaming human activity. Air pollution? Absolutely. Of course we're responsible for that. Of course. But changing the climate when we keep showing article after article about how the climate isn't warming anymore. It's been cooling. Um, today was more proof of that with our temperatures dropping to 0.23 above baseline. And last year we weren't that warm. Um, in fact, let's take a look real quick and see what last year's numbers were. I, forgive me, folks. I should have already had that information up. But 2017, globally, we ended the year at, uh, or started the year at 0.33. So we're about 0 0.10 cooler than the start of 2017 and three degrees cooler from 18. Still trending down is the point that I'm trying to make, folks. It's the message here at the Grand Solar Minimum Channel. So I'll be bringing the information, the news, the science, why we think this. But this guy definitely wins asshole of the week, Mr. Jerry Brown. I think Mr. Brown, he's like a, a multiple asshole of the week award winner. I'm almost positive I've given this to him at least twice in 2018. So he's already, January 2nd of 2019, he is already claiming that title once again. And uh, I think Jerry's sending his boys after me. Let's take a look at the weather here continentally. There's that little storm system that's moving through right now, heading towards the northeast. Let's take a look at the GFS. Interesting run here for the northeast, northwest, south, more rain. Here's some snow overnight in the New York area, upstate into New England. One to three inches overnight, quickly ending. Temperatures will remain in the upper 30s, so nothing real spectacular after that. But this slow-moving moisture moving through the south by Saturday, January 5th, finally raking the east coast and heading out to the Atlantic Ocean before our next system starts coming at us hardcore in the northwest and in the southwest once again. You're going to start your week off with snow showers in Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico once again. And then by early January 7th, Monday, we start to see another system move into the northeast. Uh, upstate New York is where I'm located, Mari and myself. And we're seeing forecasts right now, Monday into Tuesday, 3 to 5 inches, 1 to 3 during the day Tuesday, 1 to 3 during the day on Tuesday night. 1 to 3 on Wednesday, and possibly 1 to 3 on Wednesday night. Now, the GFS, to me, is showing that trend to be a little weaker than what we're seeing from the Weather Channel and other weather forecasts. But, nevertheless, we are looking at our first significant snowfall in the Northeast, probably since November, and that will break the long string of winter not being here. Ohio, I know my family in Ohio is asking me, when are we going to see some snow? It's like I was telling my brother today, where this cold area is dipping down, part of this polar vortex disruption, we're going to see this cold air in this region here, guys. Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, you guys are on that outside bubble. I'm not saying it's not possible we can see that polar vortex dip through Kentucky and Ohio and Pennsylvania, but for the most part, guys, it's going to stay on the northeast side of Ohio into Pennsylvania, like Erie, PA, Buffalo, New York, and into the northeast. And that's what's happening right now in this current pattern. But this is our first significant snowfall for the Northeast since November. And as this snowstorm is moving through, the Northwest once again is throwing us another low pressure system. Uh, this time, more snow coming to Nevada, Idaho, rain into the Southwest, which, by the way, guys, um, they had a very extreme drought in this region. So this is welcome precipitation, snow or rain, either way. By Friday, January 11th, this is way far out, but GFS is picking up on something that could be a pretty sizable storm here as we have like an Alberta Clipper shooting across into the northeast, uh, possibly into upstate New York. But look at this. By Saturday, January 12th, this low-pressure system gets its act together. Look at the size of this thing. We're talking snow, shore, uh, snow showers upstate New York and then staying north into Canada, but then back into the states South Dakota, very heavy snow on the west side of this snow in North Dakota, northern parts of uh, Minnesota, possibly Wisconsin, as this storm moves out to the east. Now, 
Right now, what they are showing us temperatures warm enough to rain between Saturday night and Sunday. I don't know if that's really going to hold true at this point because that's when the first blast of cold air from this polar vortex is going to shoot through the United States. So that could be another major system that we may need to watch here as this might be just because we're so far out. This area right here, I, I, I'm not seeing... It's possible this is correct, but it could be a, a mixture of a sleet, a freezing rain type event before this changes all back to snow because this has started off as snow and as we move through to the next day, it'll go back to snow as temperatures will begin to plummet on the 13th of January. Now, most of the United States will start to see colder temps move in and this goes all the way back through the Midwest, Ohio to Nebraska, Colorado, uh, more high pressure coming in through the Rockies and starting up another low pressure system storm that starts in the south and right now it's just showing it stalling out and moving off the Atlantic and by the 18th and the 19th of January once again we are picking up some major moisture throughout the Midwest. This could be where my family and my brother, you guys might see your first big snowstorm of 2019 right around the time of January 16th through the 20th. And again, this is all far out. I mean, a lot can change, especially anywhere from today until, uh, you know, I I'm going to say that we can rely on the forecast through uh, Monday, January 7th. Other than that, right now, uh, we are experiencing winter-like weather throughout most of the parts of the United States and in areas that usually don't see snow. So we will continue to monitor this situation as we think the Northeast will get hit not once but twice with two big snowstorms in the first half of January. One on the 8th and then one again at the end of this run right around the 15th and four, I'm sorry, the 12th through the 15th here at the very end. And then there's another system on the 18th. So that's three big systems that possibly could affect the Northeast. This last one could be big enough to get Midwest states as well. So we will keep our eyes on that. There's the temperature run. I'll just let this play here. You guys keep an eye on the Arctic blast that's coming in from these polar vortexes. A little bit more of a mild temperature this Friday into Saturday, but then it will cool back down once again as colder air pushing back down in the lower 48, mainly keeping the, uh, the northeast pretty cool. And then as we get into deeper part of January, closer temperatures to freezing for most of the northwest, the Great Lakes, and then after the 18th, we see temperatures possibly back into the sub-zero digits. Snowfall. How much are we thinking? Well, GFS seems to think not, not too much. But upstate New York, uh, that has went up a lot. The mountainous regions, I'm sure, will see closer to 20 inches of snow. But even in some of the lower elevations, we could any see anywhere from 8 to 14 inches of snow between now and January 12th. Parts of the Northern Plains also will see an increase of snow in North Dakota and South Dakota. Parts of the Rockies, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Washington, Utah, and Colorado, your yearly average. Parts of Oklahoma and Northern Texas expected to get some snowfall as well. So a freak little snowfall here between now and the 12th of January to hit that region. Let's see exactly what we're talking about here. Somewhere around the, well, tonight and to tomorrow. So they'll get their snow early and it'll be cold enough to stick around for a few days as well. Taking a look at the El Nino 3-4 region. Look at that, guys. This is the first time that I've showed this during the El Nino where the temperatures are 28 or lower in this top region up here, guys. This is what we're watching up here. These are usually 29s. This is extremely cooled off. 27, 28, 28, 27, 26, 25, 23, 24, that was a 29, now is a 28 near the Baja region. Doesn't look too warm for El Nino, does it? And finally, these anomaly maps are starting to match up a little bit. Right now we're sitting at 0 0.474 below the threshold. I'm sorry, it's above baseline, but it's below the El Nino threshold just by a little bit. So we're not going to sit here and say, oh, it's canceled. Still neutral enough, but barely Barely, I mean Modaki barely, at worst. North Atlantic now below baseline, plum plummeting below baseline. As we are, it's 
almost dead of the winter here in the northern hemisphere so this is not too unusual in my opinion so just reporting ice we reported on taking a look at the total coverage looking pretty healthy for january of 2019 not a lot of melting i see and that's gonna do it i think for me tonight guys um one last look at windy.com we got snow showers in oklahoma city and then all along the south it's all rainfall some snow showers in Detroit, heavier snow in the Upper Peninsula, Traverse City, Interlochen. Snow in the Northern Plains, not much, very light. And of course, the BC, Alberta area experiencing snowfall. Northwest, you're quiet tonight for a change. Same in the South. Not the Southwest, we still got some snow showers going on here in Alpine. Negative two in Gallup, by the way, guys. Some crazy temps out here in the Southwest. Marty, did you have anything you'd like to share? Well, I'd like to thank you for at least trying the James Earl Jones thing. Well, I don't know. I didn't really try. That last one that you did, someone as I forgot who said it. I think it was Ab Team said that you sort of sound like Forrest Gump. Forrest. <laughs> so I didn't sound like Morgan Freeman. And we have. Uh, Barry, I want to say hello. He says he's our biggest fan, and he wants you to start doing some Ireland weather, Jake. I know it's hard for you to see the requests in the chat, but, you know. I'll have to take a look into Maybe that, guys. Barry can have a special forecast from you one of these days, Jake. Well, if he's a big fan, you know, I can't, you know, I can't deny the big fans, right? And then, um, I don't, I don't have a whole lot to cover it's sort of you know up and down i don't know maybe i feel like i got a case of the mondays jake it's it feels like a monday but like, it is definitely off yeah you know so i don't have a whole lot i just want to uh welcome everyone to the channel and please check out we're on facebook twitter discord rattle them off jake yeah patreon twitter we're all over the place everything social media we will be there covering whatever events that we can i'll get caught up on social media eventually. yeah we got a lot of best ofs to do we need to also uh plan a crop loss uh discussion too because i know uh, that's another factor that we don't always cover that we probably should start really paying attention soon um just with all kinds of weather issues flooding crop losses that we had this past summer and spring we will now be watching to see how the weather uh, goes into uh, late winter and see if we have another season where farmers get things into the ground late once again. So, all right, guys, with that being said, that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and share, and we will be back Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern time with another live update for the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Guys, take care. We'll talk soon.